Performance TV, presented by Low Car Performance Products, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know, Tommy, with, with all of the vehicles that are coming out of the manufacturers today, you really wouldn't think one of the biggest weak links might be in the ignition. Well, they build all this power, but yet sometimes they forget you got to have a lot of spark for that power. So today's products here, Weapon X has brought a lot of neat innovations to the ignition system for all these cars. We've got a Ford 500 back here, a Shelby 500. I'm wanting to get some of this stuff on here. So you guys uh, talk a little bit about it. I'm going to get busy working. Yeah, I'm pretty anxious. And Mark, uh, thanks for joining us. You know, to see, I had no idea. Now we're looking at what manual, well, this is a Ford part here, but Yes. Out of what, what car? Something like we would find back here? Yes, exactly. This ignition coil actually directly came out of uh, the Ford GT500. It is a stock OEM ignition coil. And basically what Weapon X did is we took a hard look at this ignition coil and came up with something called direct fire technology. Okay. What you're going to find here on every Motocraft ignition coil is basically the ignition coil connects to the spark plug using a spring interconnect. Now, oh, with this probably. spring, you've got a lot of resistance in the circuit, and it's not just for it. Actually, several manufacturers do the same thing. So this is a Dodge ignition coil, and they've got basically a spring in between the actual ignition coil and the spark plug. So what we do is we look at these designs and basically redesign the ignition coil from the ground up. So we have an axial design using direct fire technology that extends the power stage of the ignition coil and attaches it directly to the spark plug. This is what really impresses me when I take a look at this. Show us the end of the spark plug going in the OEM first. The OEM first, so that's what you got. And it's loose. It's loose, poor connection, bad conductors. It's just a bad design overall. Yeah, now check this out. This is pretty sweet. So with the Weapon X stuff, locked in, not going anywhere. You know, and, and while Tommy's back here working on this Mustang Cobra 500, didn't I hear something about these are in the uh, 1000s? Exactly. The Shelby 1000 uh, produces an amazing 1200 horsepower. And in the Shelby 1000, they actually use our ignition components. Really? So we are going to be installing today the same ones that are in the Shelby 1000s in this Shelby 500. Exactly. Oh, this owner is going to be really happy. Now, there are some other products here that you guys have come out with as well, and, and that would be your line of spark plugs. Yes. With all of our components, what we try to do is create a spark plug or create an ignition coil that is highly efficient. We use actually an aviation style electrode, triple iridium electrode. And because they use redundancy, this actually ensures a reliably lit combustion event every time. And this is from our subsidiary branch that does power sports equipment, Takai Racing. What we also do is reduce the internal resistance of the spark plug. Most spark plugs come with internal resistors of five to 10,000 ohms. In a lot of our products, what we do is completely eliminate the resistance or lower the resistance to about 2,500 ohms. Let's check in and see how Tommy's coming along. Well, I got all my coils out and uh, I heard you guys talking about spark plugs. You got spark plugs, here's your new coils. And as a matter of fact, Mark's got our spark plugs for us. Now, why did you start on this side over here and leave this for me? Uh, you guys need to get busy. You got a little work to do over there. Yes, we do, all right. I'm gonna pull these plugs out put new plugs in it before I put the new coils in there. I mean, this, this was relatively easy. I mean, it uh, just pulled this cover off, pulled the coils right out, knocked these plugs out of here, and uh, it's a pretty easy install. Exactly. Uh, the most complicated part of the whole process is just pulling off the intake. Uh, everything else is relatively out there in the open on these engines. Now, I know you could just replace the coils without the plugs, but if you're going to do it, you might as well do the whole works. I mean, there's there's definitely weak links in all the ignition system. That's why we have this product. Exactly. The whole point, like I said, is to improve the efficiency so that we can take that input energy from the ignition coil and create more spark energy. So if you're gonna go to the effort and do it, you might as well just replace the spark plugs while you're there. Here, you're gonna need to. All right, thanks. Now I'm gonna put all the plugs in. And now it's time to install the coils. Is there any, any tips or tricks to installing these Weapon X coils? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you actually asked because a lot of people have a problem installing the ignition coils properly. And that's because of the direct fire technology on the end of the ignition coil. It basically 
uh, makes it more difficult for the ignition coil to install. A lot of people just drop the coil down in there. Yeah, well, we, saw, we saw the stock one, it just kind of slides over. Exactly. And so, these, you kind of have to press fit and get them on there. Exactly. As a result, a lot of people just end up putting the ignition coil in the engine, leaving it sit on the top of the spark plug. After a couple of weeks, it starts backing off the spark plug, and of course, you get misfire, right? So 99% of the time we ever do have any problems, it's because the user installed the ignition. They weren't, weren't pressed on properly. Exactly. Right. So can we put a little lube on here or something to make them slide in there a little easier? That's a good point. Normally what we suggest to our customers is spread a little dielectric grease around the rib portion of the ignition coil. Yeah, just to let it slide down the plug tube a little better. Exactly. These ribs help keep out any kind of moisture and it helps it slide down the, the uh, tube. I don't want to put it in here though. Exactly. <laughs> Smart guy. Um, of course, basically dielectric grease, what a lot of people don't understand, is actually an electrical insulator. When people are coating the ends of the ignition coil with an insulator, you're actually doing your ignition circuit a disservice. With that, you don't need any dielectric grease. We use a brass or aluminum end, which does not require any kind of protection. It basically eliminates corrosion or any kind of issues that you might have like that. I'm going to get all these coils, get a little grease on them, get them all ready to put in, but Right now, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more Performance TV. This edition of Performance TV, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by Bead Buster, the world's best portable ATV tire bead breaker tool. Exoto, extending the life of your vehicles and equipment. Weapon X Performance, the most trusted name in late model aftermarket ignition performance. Ericsson Manufacturing, tie it, tow it, load it, we've got you covered. And by Omega Research, legendary vehicle security. Welcome back to Performance TV. While we're at break, I went ahead and put some grease on all the boots of the coils so they slide down in there a little easier. Before we're going to put these in, I want to reconnect the wires. So Once you put them in, it'll be a little tight to get the wires on there, so I'm going to put them on before I put them in. Nice and snug, snap fit. Now, you want to slide it back down in there, but one thing Mark talked about was once you get it in there, a lot of people just push them in, okay, that was good, but you want to make sure that the connection is, is solid, so you want to push on it and you'll feel it snap in. There, I felt it slide right over the spark plug. Good solid connection. There's a lot of places in the engine, you can't get in there, you can't really push on it. You might take an extension, put it on the top, and just put a little leverage on it and snap it into place. Don't take a dead blow and hit on it. Just nice, snug fit, make sure it's snapped in. How are you guys coming over there? Hey, just uh, watching you over here, and I'm, and I'm thinking, if you could pass that grease over to me, oh, then yeah. I could, yeah, I yeah, yeah, you could share a little bit. Yeah. And remember, like Tommy said, we're not putting any of this in the end at all. Because why? It's like an insulator. We don't want that. Exactly. Electrical insulation is always a bad thing in an ignition circuit. The only reason dielectric grease exists is to keep the rubber boot from vulcanizing to the cylinder head. So it basically allows us to remove the ignition coil without having any kind of resistance while pulling it out. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to be nice and do this hard one back here for you, Tommy. Oh, that's for me. I got all the coils back in, everything attached. I'm going to make sure the wiring is all underneath the lip so it doesn't get pinched. Slide this bracket back in here. Put my bolts back in. Struggling over there a little bit. Just saying. Making sure it's snapping. Does it help if you make faces when you do it? Here, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> make like grit faces. Or... Where's that extension, Tom? Yeah, the back one I got. Come on. Push there. Give it a little tap. tightening this last bolt and I'll be done. And there we go. Well, I'll tell you what, Tommy, 
you're pretty much getting done over there. I've got all the, the new coils put in. Could you uh, finish this up for me? I've got some really cool stuff that he brought that I still haven't had a chance to talk about yet. Yeah, if you want it done right, do it yourself. Okay. You're right. Well, I'm already pretty excited about what we've been doing back here, Mark, but you've brought all kinds of other things as well from Weapon X. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about right here, this is, is pretty interesting how you have taken all of this and put it right inside. Tell me what you got going on here. I mean, this is OEM. Yes. This is part of our Power Spark division where Weapon X basically created a division called Takai Racing. And what we have done is taken, uh, for example, this is an ignition coil aux off of a Kawasaki KX450. And what we've done is we've replaced the ignition coil and ignition wire with just an ignition coil. So this ignition coil would actually connect directly to the spark plug. Again, that's part of our direct fire technology, right. where we reduce the amount of resistance in the circuit, we improve the um, electrical efficiency of the ignition coil, and create a hotter spark, a longer duration spark, which typically nets about one to two horsepower per coil. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I mean, this is easy, bolt on changes. And you saw how fast we did it back here. I can only imagine how quick you can do that on a motorcycle. And we, when we're talking about wires, you also have, we have a big difference here between your wires and stock wires. Exactly. Um, not only do we do uh, ignition coils, spark plugs, we do ignition wires, plasma booster right here that we have that increases the voltage to the ignition coils. So again, it's all about increasing the efficiency of the ignition circuit and really giving the user a hotter spark. So anything right from a street driven car all the way up to a race engine is gonna see a benefit. So this would be something that'd be pretty easy to install too then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a simple two wire install for the power. We've got a ground and it does up to eight channels. So we just splice into the positive ignition wire on each uh, ignition coil and away you go. That's awesome, weaponxperformance.com. You can find out about what Tommy and I just installed in this vehicle, all of the other products that Mark has brought to show us today and. I'm ready to go for a ride. Hey, all right. I like it. Nice. <laughs> I'd say we uh, find a back road for this one right now. What do you say? Except uh, I'm not sitting in the back seat. You can sit <laughs> back there. Okay. That's all that we have for this week. Join us again next week for another edition of Performance TV. Let's go. All right.